Hello, it's Jo here from Minerva today. I'm going to show you how to add piping detail to patterns and garments. Um, it's quite easy, but you need to break it down into a few stages and there's a couple of different choices to be made. Don't forget to follow us on Minerva. You'll see the feed every day where you'll get some really good fabric inspiration, trends, and uh, pattern of the day or patterns that you might not have seen. It's a really great place to find your next project. Today I'm wearing um, some art gallery cotton fabric um, I've used a vintage pattern to make this. It was a 1960s shift dress with a little Peter Pan collar. Um, it is beautiful fabric. I'm going to have to stand up to show it you because it is like looking at an oil painting. It's got the colours swishing all the way around. It's got that white background. It's not lines and it's not see-through. And then I've picked up some of the more cerise and green colours from the fabric when I cut out the collar and actually it was a bit of a squeeze but I did make this out of 1.5 metres of fabric so it was a really good value dress in such a high quality fabric. Piping is a little raised detail, it's like a piece of cord wrapped inside a piece of bias binding and it gives you this little sort of looks like a, a little pipe cleaner roll, rolling along the edge of your fabric and you might know it from um, home furnishings because it's quite often used to go around the edge of a cushion but it is a really nice detail to add to your clothes so this pattern didn't have piping but I really liked it on the collar here because the Peter Pan collar was a really nice feature of the dress but because the dress was really busy fabric the, the collar would get a little bit lost so the piping just marks out the Peter Pan collar for everybody to see. Another place you might see it is if you want to um, change two different fabrics or mix two different fabrics. I made this um, evening dress um, five years ago, but somebody gave me this as an off cut because that was the leftovers from their dress. And I had quite a big piece of this silk dupe on. So to marry them up using the piping here around the neck, goes round the armhole uh, along this empire line it tied the two fabrics together and it goes across the back here look it needs pressing and around here so piping can help you marry together two different fabrics it can lineate some busy fabrics or it can be the finishing edge on something i really like using it if i can get a bit of piping in somewhere i'll really try to you can tell I like piping because there's always a little pile of it behind me. So you can get ready-made piping from us, from Minerva, and that's really good if you're learning and starting out. So this is a very fine one, looks you get with, that's for using on garments. And then this is a thicker one that you might use on cushions or upholstering a garden chair and having that around the edge. You can make your own, so you'd use bias binding and piping cord, and I'll show you that. And then you'll need to encase the cord inside the bias binding yourself. It's a little bit more skillful. But if you just want to see if you like piping, then buying ready-made is probably the best way to start. Today I'm going to finish off my Stevie dress for a teenager using this chambray. It's got a little daisy print on it. Can you see it there? And that denim look background. All the look of denim but without the stiffness. This is really fluid and light and really beautiful for a summer make. And then I'm going to pair with it the piping that I just showed you, the spotty piping. Um, this is going to be used around the neckline and to highlight the design lines of the Stevie because it's got a yoke across the back and a back slit. So if I use piping around that, I'll be drawing out those features on the dress and it'll really make them stand out. You can add your own details to any dress, really. You can add pockets in the seams, you can add a patch pocket. On the Stevie dress, I like to add um, some piping that runs all the way down the back slit, around the neck, and down the back slit and across the yoke and if you've not used piping before it's one of my favorite things to do it's a little bit fiddly 
but you have to make sure that you're still keeping your seam allowance so um you will see here i'm pinning on the piping but i still need to have my 1.5 seam allowance so i can't put the piping right up against the edge as a guide because it's not big enough i can't even use the overlock as a little guide because that's taking my seam line to the outside of the piping so there's a little bit of measuring with my trusty seam gauge to make sure that where i'm putting the piping is still allowing for the 1.5 centimeter seam allowance the only way you're going to fall in love with piping is if you take the time to tack the piping down it's a brave person who tries to attach some piping two layers of fabric right sides together with pins and try and get it through the machine and expect it to look great so i've um pinned my piping on checking that i've still got that 1.5 seam allowance because that's going to give me the right bit around the neck and then i'm going to put the facing on top as a sort of second stage and then when i sew around there you'll see that i'll have my piping will be along the back it's quite a fun piping this is a polka dot because this dress is for um, a teenager but if this dress was for myself i'd probably use matching chambray fabric or um, a white piping to make it a summer dress but you only way you're going to get good piping is put, breaking it down into small stages and making sure that it's not going to move when you get it under the machine The next layer of your very neat pipings is to, so you tack the piping down on its own with the seam allowance and then you put the sandwich together so you've put the next layer on top and I've tacked that as well because um, I don't want to be trying to get pins under and keep the piping flat underneath. I just want to be able to concentrate on the sew, not taking the pins out. And I always do two passes of this neckline through the sewing machine. So the first one, its primary purpose is just to attach all the layers together. I know on my first pass, I'm not going to get close enough to the piping. I just want to attach all the layers together. Then on the second pass, that's when I'm really going to concentrate and try and get my piping to look as good as it can be. And I'm going to come back and show you how to get that really, really close. To sew with piping, you'll need to change the foot because a normal foot will squash or rock up slightly on the piping. So you need to use a zipper foot where you're pressing down here, but this side of piping is allowed to be free. And the first pass... I'm not going to be too careful, I'm just going to follow my line of tacking. So you can see where I started, it's no good at all, that's not piping, that's just a great big flap, but it is all held together. So towards the end, I tried to get it closer, but even when you think you've got it close, you st it's still not close enough. I really want that to look like a little round roll on the edge, not just a flat. So I'm going to change my foot again, and this time I'm going to use a very narrow foot. So this means the needle can run right up against the, st the piping. And there's no little bit jacking out the back that's squashing the piping down. This is just squeezing all the piping to one edge. I use it for putting in um, invisible zips and zips. It's a really good foot to do close work. To see how close you've got to get, that blue line and that red line is my tacking and first pass. But if I really run my marking tool up against the piping, You'll see, 
I'm a long way away from that first line. So I've got to add nearly another kind of four millimeter stitch line there. And when you're sewing, you want to be using your fingertips to feel where the piping is. You can draw on with a marking tool just to give you a bit of a guide if you want. But really feeling as you're pushing it under the foot will get you really, really close. So I've done the second pass through the machine. And this is the end that I did quite carefully in the first place. So even when I thought I'd gone carefully, I still had to go another couple of millimetres to get really up to the edge of the pipe. And when I could feel it through the fabric, I could feel that curve there. And then I was quite a long way away on my first pass, but see how much I had to grip. And then you'll see... There really is proper piping now because it needs clipping but it, it really rolls round and it's not a, a flapping, it is a piping as in terms of the word pipe meaning cylindrical so it really has got a proper piped edge, not just a flapping piece. I'm going to clip all of that now, turn it out, press it um, I'm going to make sure that my loop on the other side for doing it up is in the right place and then hopefully we can finish it off and we can have a look what it looks like on the finished garment. Look at that. That's a lovely bit of detail. So that's the back of the stevie and there's piping along the yoke line and then you've got piping here. And that's the button loop so you've you've got it neat on both sides and it's a bit fun with the uh, spotty one but it's for a teenager so it can be fun it's for summer so you've got a patch pocket you've got some piping and we've just got to finish it off up the sides If you decide you want to make your own piping, you'll need to buy some piping cord and you need to make your own bias binding. That's kind of why you would make your own piping because you want to have something that um, matches what you're doing. So here's some bias binding I made. It's nice and stretchy. It was cut on the bias. It has to be cut on the bias to make piping so that it will go around the curve of a collar or around an armhole. And you're going to put your little bit of piping inside the open out the bias binding and then again this is going to require a few stages a bit like the previous piping but of course when you buy ready-made you can get onto the stages of sewing it to the item there's also a few stages to this before you start so what you're going to do is you're going to put the piping inside the opened out bias binding and then you're going to machine sew along there and then you can keep and don't go too close but enough to hold all that together you can apply that exactly the same to items of clothing or in this case this is um a camelot uh, cotton fabric i used in my kitchen I had a tiny bit left over so I made it up into bias binding in case I wanted to remake my oven gloves or um, make a cushion for the chair so that's why you would make bias binding yourself because you want to make it with a fabric that you've chosen yourself. Thank you for watching today I hope you've enjoyed it I hope that um, you might try a little bit of piping somewhere either on a collar on a little edge of a pocket or um, around an armhole or just even to try a cushion and give it a go and see if you like it. Do follow us on Minerva, add your makes. If you've made something with piping, we'd love to see it. The Minerva website isn't just for people who are modelling and sewing for Minerva. It's for a whole sewing community so that we can all share each other's ideas. Thanks for watching. Bye bye.